so good morning everyone so today we are going to deal with the topic of thermodynamics is a continuation of topic of heat and thermodynamics uh, uh, there are only few points if those few points are well understood i believe it's a fairly easy topic and uh, before we start with thermodynamics i will take one more question there are some question which actually do not involve any principle of thermodynamics it can be just solved using kinetic theory of gases and ideal gas equation so we always keep in mind ideal gas, gas equation is always valid so let's look at one question which does not involve thermodynamics after this i move on to thermodynamics topic so what is given here two glass bulbs of equal volume so this is i see a glass bulb here let's see this volume is equal so let's see this volume is v and this volume also is v and they are connected by narrow tube so basically narrow tube mean volume of this tube is negligible compared to volume of the uh, bulbs here they are filled with a gas at 0 k 0 degree centigrade so this also is zero this also equal temperature equal volume and pressure also is p so this also is pressure is p and this also is pressure is p okay so and when this is there so basically everything is identical this also will have certain number of moles of gas and this also will have certain number of moles of gas so basically all three parameter all four parameters are given and we know all are related so this something this is scenario initially what has done here uh, one of the bulb is placed in water bath and heated to 300 degree so basically initial temperature was equal to 273 and this also is equal to 273 so one of them is heated and it is heated to suppose i place it and start heating so what would be the effect of heating so one of them is heated and other is still at 0 degrees so if 0 uh, 273 k the when we heat uh, we can understand from intuition or we can also understand from equation what we understand for equation pv is equal to nrt so when we heat any object what has to happen as the pressure will increase or volume will increase if volume is constant pressure will increase so or both may happen so as we tend to heat this gas molecules here will tend to move out they will try to expand so in this process what will happen see one way of thinking would be initial pressure is equal when we heat it up some molecules from here will tend to go and occupy the other bulb so when we heat it up so our overall volume cannot change two things will happen one some molecules will get transformed from here to here to our one so number of molecules or number of moles in this will decrease by certain amount this become n minus delta n and this may become n plus delta n so there is some transfer both will not have symmetry is lost so both will let have equal number of moles but volume of bulb cannot change and second thing what will happen when heating the pressure tend to increase earlier both were had pressure p and p total volume cannot change the pressure also will change so two things may happen one is transfer of certain number of molecules and second thing the pressure also will change to p dash and since they are connected by tube the pressure has to be equal so these two changes are happening and what you are asking a change to t and k what is the fractional change in number of moles in the gas in the chamber what is the fractional change which is what you need to calculate and this one here there's no mention of heat transfer and all so this is not thermodynamics question this is pretty simple uh, this is ideal gas equation question so this key point i mentioned here moles and radicals has equal moles is heated overall conductive pressure will change and in same both one it since both are connected pressure become p dash in both and some transfer of molecules will happen so initial state the how do i apply yeah let's look at this so we can each bulb if the volume was v what is the initial number of moles i can calculate this was the initial number of moles and if temperature has changed the number of moles one case become n plus delta n another will n minus n minus delta n and that's what they are asking here also so if number of moles change here so what we do we apply ideal gas equation in the left part and right part separately that's only thing we are going to do so both are not identical now so initial equation when we applied for each bulb this was applied for one bulb and same equation were valid for second bulb now this is the volume i apply again so this is n plus delta n and wherever temperature is lower will have higher number of moles so n plus delta n this is for the right bulb and p dash v 
by our simple equation. Basically, I use ideal gas equation, number of moles in the right bulb, and number of moles in the left bulb. I have these two equations. And from these two equations, which are the two unknowns? Two unknowns are P dash. What is the new value of P dash using this equation? And other is tail time. So when we solve, I get this value of P dash two equation. And using this, I solve. I get P dash will be slightly higher. And this number of P dash compared to P. And I get the value of delta. And also solving the equation, delta is comes equal to this number here. And I can find the fractional change here. So what we have done here? Initially, we applied ideal gas equation to one bulb. And same equation is valid for both. When difference was made, temperature was changed. So we treated two bulbs separately. And we applied ideal gas equation to each of the two bulbs. Only thing keeping in mind, since they are connected, pressure being same. And actually what I have done by using N plus delta N and N minus delta N, I've also kept number of moles as equal, same number of moles. So we can use such kind of equation and ideal gas equation you can apply. Right. Now we move on to thermodynamics. The word itself means the flow of heat. So first, uh, almost entire chapter is just based on one law, first law of thermodynamics. And first law of thermodynamics is nothing but conservation of energy applied to gas molecule as a system. We have been applying conservation of energy in different forms, electrical capacitor, so many different ways. So his, the, here also we apply conservation of energy for thermal system. So what is conservation energy mean? And whenever we have to visualize, we visualize thermodynamics or thermodynamic system in form of gas, which is held in a, a cylinder with a piston. So where is the system we are taking? We are taking all the gas molecules which are enclosed in the cylinder. So that's my system. System is all gas molecules enclosed in a cylinder. And this is my system here. And what it talks about conservation of energy, if we give some amount of heat. So we are given energy in form of heat energy, delta Q. So delta Q2, this is the heat energy given to the gas. So when we give this uh, heat energy to the gas, it will, it may change its form. So basically this energy may get converted in different forms. So question is, what are the different forms it can have? When gas is enclosed inside the cylinder, it can have two different forms. What are two different forms? Part of the heat we have seen earlier also in case of uh, solids, uh, whatever heat we give, unless there's a change in phase, it leads to increase in temperature. So it will lead to increase in temperature. It may lead to increase in temperature and increase in temperature we can talk in terms of internal energy. So part of the energy goes into raising the internal energy. But unlike solid, its volume also can change. And wherever volume is changed, it can also do work on the surrounding. We'll come to that part also. So basically what will happen, heat is given delta Q. It can result in increase in uh, internal energy. And it can also do work on the surrounding. So work done by the gas on the surrounding. So this is something it may have two forms. So this is the equation. Heat given to gas is equal to work done by the gas plus change in internal energy. And sign convention also, I'll come to the sign convention. So what is the sign convention for delta Q? So in case of physics, whenever heat is given to the gas, that is taken as positive. And what are the wordings we can use? We can say delta Q, two is positive. When gas absorbs heat, wording could be when gas receives heat or heat is given to the gas, all means same thing. In this case, gas is receiving heat energy and energy to get given gas in form of heat, it will be positive. And when heat is taken away, delta Q becomes negative. How about work done? The work done also by the gas on the surrounding is positive. So work done by the gas on the surrounding is positive when the gas expands. Whenever expansion takes place, uh, work done is positive. And we look at uh, these terms. So, uh, and third part, this part is simple. What is delta U? Delta U have done, delta U is positive when temperature of gas increases. And we know already uh, from kinetic theory of gases, internal energy of a gas is equal to F by two NRT. So what does this indicate? F indicates degree of freedom, which is three, five, and six for monatomic, diatomic, and polyatomic. This is internal energy of N moles of gas at temperature T Kelvin and gas having degree of freedom of F. 
So this gives you for entire gas and moles of gas at temperature T having degree of freedom F. This is the internal energy. And this energy is nothing but sum of kinetic energy, both rotational as well as translation for all gas molecules put together. So this first, and I think key part is understanding all these term, terms here. What is heat given? What is work done? And what is change in internal energy? Among the three, I think easiest is internal energy directly. It depends only on temperature. And that's why we call it a state function. If we get a particular state here, if the temperature is known, we don't have to know how the temperature has been reached. The process is unimportant. How did you arrive at particular temperature? The history has no value in terms of determination of uh, internal energy. Whereas work done and all, it depends on the process. So work done, basically, it means initial state and final state. Whereas temperature, final state, it only depends on what the temperature at instance is. If I know temperature at an instance without knowing what happened in the past, we can calculate internal energy. And that's why I call this a state function. This is state function. It doesn't depend on the path. And path part will understand this is what we need to understand today. Right. Now, in most cases, heat transfer as well as change in temperature. And whenever uh, we have come across, we have used this term delta Q earlier also in heat transfer. And uh, we always want to know as a scientific principle, if heat is given, what would be the change in temperature? And we have related in case of solid, delta Q is equal to NC delta T. Delta T. Here we'll write delta Q is equal to NC delta T. And what is this here? Since N is used, this also will have number of moles in the denominator. So this one is heat capacity, molar heat capacity. In this case, what we notice here, see, there is a relationship in case of solid, uh, heat was going only into one form. It was only going in form of increasing or change in internal energy, which could be in terms of sensible energy, or it could also be uh, uh, in form of latent heat. But there's no change in the volume in case of solid. But here, change in volume also is taking the work done, work is also being done. So hence, this, there's another parameter which depends on the path. Hence, this molar heat capacity also depends on what is the work done during process of transfer of heat. Hence, molar heat capacity of gas is dependent on work done as well. And work done depends on the process. It depends on the process. And C value is not same. You first need to tell what kind of process. For a given process, we'll have a C. And this is one of the first tasks we have to understand. So uh, to just to have a quick understanding, moment I talk of thermodynamics, this is the first thing it should flash to your mind. Thermodynamics is uh, basically this equation. And uh, since there are these three terms involved, we need to understand each of these three terms well. So let's try and understand. This term is simple. I hope we are all clear. This term is really simple. Let's try more other term also. Even delta Q also, in a way, we are defined. So delta Q also can be written in terms of any process. If this is constant, delta Q also I can write in terms of and into molar heat capacity into delta T. Now let's understand what is work done and what does process mean. So let's first try to understand process and how do we actually uh, use that process. See, when we talk about ideal gas equation, ideal gas equation is always valid. So what is ideal gas equation? All cases when we talk of uh, we ideal gas PV is equal to NRT is uh, true for all cases unless mentioned otherwise. This is always valid. Okay. But from this equation, if I look at, does it give a unique value of uh, volume at particular pressure? No, it doesn't have a unique value. So for depending on different values of temperature for same pressure, you can have multiple values of volume. So if I have, if I have two parameters, basically here we deal with three parameters, pressure, volume, and temperature. So three parameters, uh, one equation doesn't give a unique relationship. I need one more equation. And one more equation depends on the process. So what does process mean? Process is additional relationship between these parameters. And let's see why that is important. And if process is defined, let's understand. Uh, I, uh, let me, let's go through one process and understand this. So let's take here, we have some in a piston, we have some gas and initially, Let's say the gas is at had some, at, it is seen in terms of, and whenever we have this kind of plot, this is called indicator diagram. So let me use PV diagram here. 
and where is the gas here this is gas is at uh, initially is at a and at that time its pressure is p not atmospheric pressure let's say and its volume is v not now let's see what the process means so this is something it gas is kept here and if the pressure is atmospheric pressure we should understand if the piston is massless we have not kept any weight on the top of the piston that's why the pressure is atmospheric outside pressure inside pressure is same now what you can do but if i start adding some weight on the top of piston so gradually what i do let's understand what the process is slowly i place some small grains of sand I, if I place a small mass here, what will happen? Pressure will change. We know what is the change in pressure. Pressure increase in pressure will be equal to whatever mass we place delta m into g divided by cross section area of the piston. So as I keep adding more and more mass, pressure also will gradually increasing. So I increase the pressure a little bit. Okay. So what we do here? So so we can change pressure by adding weight. So that's the first thing you should understand. How is pressure changed here? If I have this kind of system, pressure can be increased by placing more weight on the piston, and pressure can be reduced by slowly removing some weight from the piston. It can be altered. Okay. So let's see how we carry out the process. So suppose this is my initial point, and uh, my final position. This is something I want to reach a state where pressure is twice the initial pressure. And volume also is double. And so this is the initial point, and this is the destination. As we have seen in case of kinematics, also from initial point to final point, you can they can take multiple routes, and uh, depending on the distance will vary. So let's look at in this case here. So what we do here, we keep the pressure. Now, if I start heating it up, I have not placed any weight on the piston. If I start heating up without placing any weight on the piston, I have given very small amount of heat. If we given a small amount of heat, something will change here. What would change if I do not add any weight? Pressure cannot change. So what has happened? Pressure will not change. I will see the slightly, it piston will move up. Gas will slightly expand. So if I mark what has happened, pressure remaining same. Gas is slightly expand. It has moved from this point to this point. Slowly add some more heat. So as I keep adding small amount of heat, slowly. So that what happened? Pressure I am not adding, so it will uh, it will pass through all these points. So gas will have all states as indicated by dots and keep moving, keep moving. So I have been adding heat in small increments without adding weight. If I am not adding weight, pressure has remained constant and volume has changed. I have come to point C here. So this is something what he had done here. So this now I have a plot here. This plot has been arrived, and this is a line on the indicator diagram that becomes the process. I have varied this parameter. How did I? What is the method I followed to vary this parameter? I have followed the process where I have not changed the pressure. This becomes constant pressure process. And in this process, have other parameters varied? Yes, other parameters have been varied. So what will happen? The temperature will change, volume will change, but pressure has not been changed. So whenever you have a process, any process can be plotted on an indicator diagram, and it can be plotted. It needs an additional mathematical relationship. I have used constant pressure, and after reaching C here, now volume has become two V naught. From C, if I want to reach B, what does this indicate here? Now I have to increase pressure. So after it has become twice the volume, what I do as soon as I supply a small amount of heat, you know that whenever you supply heat, <clears throat> unless we change the pressure, it has a tendency to expand. Now next time what I do, I supply heat, and as I supply heat, I add a small amount of weight here, so as not allow it to expand. So when I'm adding weight here, I'm adding heat, I'm adding small small weight, so that I'm not allowing volume to change. So I, did, I have added a small heat, I have added a small weight, pressure has increased, volume has remained same. And if we keep doing like this, so basically what we are doing here, we keep adding pressure or keep varying pressure with the addition of heat without allowing volume to change. This becomes my new process. So it will go through all the points slowly, and that's what the process means. We call quasi-static process. We assume the changes are made very, very slowly, then only the reversible process. Now, this also C to B is a process. What is the process we have followed here? We have varied the parameter 
following additional relationship, we have follow, follow, followed a process where volume was kept constant. This becomes constant volume process. So basically, we vary the parameter and we take care, we do things in a such a fashion that volume remains constant. And we reach point B here. So this becomes one process, this becomes one process. We could have reached B in multiple ways. We could have started other way around. We could have followed process A to D first and from D to B. How would I have done starting this also we can understand. So first point, uh, my purpose of explaining all these things is to two, three things here. We have to first understand what does process mean. Process is uh, how parameters vary in relation to each other. Defies a process. And that is in addition to normal ideal gas equation. And once we have defined a process in form of a mathematical equation, any process can be plotted on indicator diagram. So this is something is process. And we look at some additional process also as we go along. So process one more equation and then one more equation only gives a unique relationship between any two parameters. There are three parameters here. So when we have to plot here this indicator diagram, we can have three different combinations. The three parameters, we can have PV diagram, PT diagram and VT diagram. And those are called indicator diagrams. Right. So I hope uh, I'm, if this we use expression and we understand. So one thing, so hopefully the so far two parts. Uh, basically, first is uh, a first law of thermodynamics. Second part, the previous slide aim was to understand what does process mean and how do we, uh, we uh, I hope you also got an understanding, how do we vary the parameters, how do we control a process. So we can control pressure by adding or subtracting small quantity of weights on placed on the piston and volume also and heat also can be controlled. Now, coming to one of the important term, there was work done by the gas. Okay, and how do we understand work done by gas? Our understanding is what is work done? Work done, we understand. Work done, we write as a basically, our understanding of work is this. If force is varied, this is where work done. But for 1D motion, work done is equal to F into uh, basically, you can take the dx of force into displacement in the same direction is work done, one d motion. So here also, let's see here, what will happen here in this case. So suppose there's a gas here, it is at a pressure P inside, and uh, it undergoes, but the gas expands. And gas expands, basically, what I notice here, if I heat here, as we have seen in previous case, if you supply heat from here, and uh, if pressure is not changed, if we supply heat, the volume will increase. So let's say the piston has moved a distance delta x. Okay, so what is work done by the gas here? Let's understand work done by the gas. See, first of all, gas will, there has to be pressure for work done. So gas will exert pressure, gas will exert force. Where, on what? Gas will exert force on all surfaces it is in contact with. It will exert force on all surfaces. So it will exert on the sides of the piston, bottom of the piston, and top, uh, sorry, sides of the cylinder, bottom of the cylinder, and piston also. But for work done, there has to be displacement. So where's the displacement? Displacement in the piston. So to calculate work done by gas, we need to understand what is the force exerted by gas on the piston and what is the displacement. So force exerted by gas on the piston is how much? Force by gas on piston. Which is very easy to understand. Force in the gas exerted by the piston will be equal depending on the pressure of the gas P uh, into area of piston. That's the force gas exert. And when is the work done? Work done in when is it has a displacement. So basically, when would pressure is acting like this? Pressure is in this figure, pressure is acting in the upward direction. So work done will be positive when the piston moves in upward direction. So what is the work done here? Work done by gas, which is positive, which will go pressure force into displacement, pressure into area of the piston, into dx. That's the work done. And this can be written in one form. It can be written as pressure into area into displacement. But what is area of piston and displacement equal to? This is nothing but change in volume of the gas. So as far as gas is concerned, this is the work done by gas, P into dV. So area and P dV is work done. 
And whenever DB is positive, in case of expansion, work done is positive. And we can also understand, we see we, whenever any such thing is there, if this is take plotted on x-axis, this is y-axis, this term is nothing but similar to y dx. And its area under area under cover and x-axis. So what is work done for larger displacement? Work done when the volume changes from V1 to V2 will be equal to PDV. That's work done. And what is this term? This, what, uh, this term is nothing but area under PV curve and V axis. Area under PV curve and V axis for the corresponding volume. That's what the work done is. So from A to B, if the gas expand, if the process is in this fashion, if the final volume is greater than initial volume, work done is positive, expansion is positive. So whichever way it happens, if the final volume is greater, work done is positive. And in this process, what the work done is, area under PV curve and the V axis, sometimes they invert the axis also. So area under PV curve and V axis is the, uh, is the work done here. So I hope second part, this also is clear. So uh, out of the three terms now, process, we should have uh, uh, first law, what is process and what is work done? Internal energy, I think it should be clear anyway. Okay. So now come to understanding some more different processes. We have briefly touched upon iso, uh, basically isobaric process and constant volume process. And uh, by the most process, we have done it in chemistry as well. So let's understand what those processes are and let's try to understand them very well. Isothermal process. Isothermal process, as the name suggests, we carry out change in the parameters in such a way the temperature does not change. So delta T is equal to zero, hence internal energy also cannot change. This is a thermal process. And if delta U is zero, the first law of thermodynamics tells you whatever heat we give to the gas, it will do work equivalent to amount of heat given. So work done is equal to uh, heat given to the gas. And in this case, uh, what is work done? The work done is PDV. And uh, in case of uh, uh, isothermal process, I can use PV is equal to NRT. And NRT is a constant, T is a constant. So this PV also is a constant C. Okay, so, or I can write P is in terms of NRT by V here. So whenever we have to find work done, we need to express P in form of V. So we written P as a function of V, so NRT by V. And if I integrate, I get the work done. So work done is very simple. Uh, nothing need to memorize. NRT T remains constant. Work done in isothermal process is NRT log of final volume divided by initial volume. Positive when V2 is greater. One key point here, one, as I said, uh, thermodynamics, one of the most important things understanding graph. And graph is, most cases to understand graph is understanding in terms of slope. So let's understand in terms of slope of a uh, first PV curve. So what is the shape of when we have isothermal curve? Isothermal curve, if we plot a indicator diagram for pressure and volume, if it is isothermal curve, uh, whatever is the product of a particular isothermal curve. And so this one, if we at particular point A, this particular, okay, no, sorry, I'll go to some other point here. Okay, so if I take some point A on the uh, particular PB here, in case of iso, if it is isothermal process, if the pressure becomes half, the volume must become double. Thus, then only the product is the temperature depends on the product of P and V. So if we vary in such a fashion, if we connect all those points, we get isothermal curve. So isothermal curve is like a rectangular hyperbola. And let's understand slope here. The slope also very easy to understand. Let's pay attention. And the slope is the important, very important part of the uh, thermodynamics. Which process here? We are talking about isothermal. So PV is equal to constant. I will do slope in a manner which we use very often in physics. What we do whenever any two variables, when there's a small change in two variables, this is small changes are fractional changes are related. So if we make a small changes, this fractional changes will be related like this. dP by P, thus power of P is one, will plus dV by V will be equal to zero. And this gives me slope, because slope is equal to dP by dV, and dP by dV is equal to minus P by P. 
And let's understand this part. So this is the slope of PV curve for isothermal process. Pressure and absolute pressure here. So when we talk about gas here, it's absolute pressure. Both cannot be negative. It means slope is always negative. So first of all, we understand slope will always be negative. Second thing, let's understand here. This point is PV. As we go to this side, what is happening? Volume is increasing. While this denominator, as we move towards right, what will happen to the slope? As we move towards right, denominator will increase and numerator will decrease. So magnitude or steepness of slope will decrease. And that's why I notice here, here the slope is steeper. As volume keeps getting in, the slope keeps getting flatter and flatter. The steepness of slope decreases with volume. That's why you get this shape here. So that's the slope of PV curve. And, uh, and second thing what we have drawn here, this is something at a particular temperature. Now suppose what happens if uh, this is PV and if I heat up the gas, as we have seen case of earlier also, from here, A, not isothermal process. I follow a process keeping volume constant. If I heat up the gas and keep adding pressure, I can follow this process. What is possible? This is I am supplying heat at a constant temperature. It will tend to expand, but I am not allowing it expand by adding some additional weight on the piston or increasing the pressure. From A, I reach point B here. Of course, at B, temperature will be higher. Why is the temperature higher? The volume has remained same. Pressure has increased. It means product has increased. It means temperature has increased. So if this is the isotherm corresponding to temperature T, for if I draw another, if I can draw multiple isotherm, this is for temperature T, for this I have drawn an isotherm T plus delta T. And what we notice here, any point on the isotherm, the temperature is same, product of PV is same. And if this temperature is T, any point above this isotherm, whether this point, this point, this point, if I mark several points in red color, what is common about all those points? All those points, if I draw, all those points will have temperature greater than T. So any point which is above our isotherm curve will have temperature greater than T. That is something one you need to understand. And any point which is below the isotherm will have a temperature lower than that. So if any process we carry out in a such a way. So suppose I say I mark three different processes. What are three different processes? I carry out a process A to C. So there's a process I vary and from A I move to C. In this case, what has happened to temperature? Since this process has moved, it has moved above isotherm. In this case, temperature has increased. Any process which goes above isotherm, temperature will rise. And if we go below isotherm, temperature will fall. So that's another point about isotherm curve. Temperature rises below temperature falls. Okay, so that is isothermal process. Isothermal temperature is constant. These two are equal, and this is work done. No change in internal energy. Let's come to constant volume process. As the volume name suggests, constant volume is there's no change in volume. Delta V is equal to zero. If delta V is equal to zero, it means work done is zero. Work is done only when the there's a change in volume. And if I apply first law. It tells you delta Q, heat given to the gas entirely goes into change in internal energy. Entire heat given to gas goes into increasing its internal energy. Right. So when we write what is Q, Q can be written as NC delta T. I have written parallelly NC delta T. Why I have written NCV here? Because this is a special process here. This is constant volume process. So heat capacity, molar heat capacity, corresponding to the process where delta V0 is written NCV delta T. NCV delta T is equal to F by 2 NR delta T. Where from this has come? This has come from understanding of internal energy. So moment I write this equation, I get the value of CV. So what is molar heat capacity at constant volume? Molar heat capacity for constant volume process, CV is equal to F by 2R, which means, uh, let's understand that also. So F by 2R for monatomic gas, it will be 3R by 2. So what does it mean, 3R by 2? What is the value of R? R is about 8.3. So that will be roughly 12.5. For monatomic gas, it will be equal to 12.5, roughly, joules per mole. Kelvin. So what does this mean here? It means if I take something like helium gas, if I take a helium gas and helium gas at maybe at any temperature T, it is the heat capacity is independent of temperature. So if I take helium gas, which is a temperature T, 
and it has an uh, it has an one mole of helium gas what is the amount of heat it will need to raise the temperature to raise the temperature to t plus 1k amount of heat which is needed at a constant volume to raise the temperature will be equal to 12.5 joules if i add heat energy equal to 12.5 joules regardless of what is initial temperature was final temperature will be higher by 1 degree and this is true for one mole of helium it will be for any motor monoatomic gas if i take it for same number of if if i take one mole of any motor monoatomic gas it will take same amount of heat and if it is not monoatomic suppose we take nitrogen gas at some temperature if i take one mole of nitrogen gas what is amount of heat i need to supply to raise the temperature to t plus 1k amount of heat required will be equal to uh, in in case of nitrogen since it is diatomic it will require equal to 5r by 2 and it will require heat 5 into 8.31 by 2 so you know this is so easy uh, it captures the uh, at constant volume if i give some amount of heat how would the temperature change it doesn't matter what the initial temperature is very strong but basically that gives you how consistent behavior of a particular type of gas is to heat okay so it is independent of temperature so make it we don't say this is the heat capacity and so on so temperature it is heat capacity for a process it is constant it is independent of temperature so whichever temperature it is it takes same amount of heat okay then we come to constant pressure process so what is constant pressure process suppose i am here uh, this is my initial point a i want to carry out a, how do i carry out constant pressure process so constant pressure process i do not add weight to the piston here as i have seen discussed earlier also if i start heating it up the temperature will keep going up and volume also will keep expanding so if i carry out process like this ab this process is a, i this is a constant pressure process pressure is not changing and this is constant pressure expansion can we do in a different way also starting from the same point what happens if i take remove heat from the gas in this case this case what happened heat has been given here delta q was positive delta q was positive but if i remove heat and i do not change the weight on the piston i am not changing pressure volume will if i remove heat so how do i remove heat i bring in contact with the object with the low temperature i gas will pass through all this intermediate states if i do it slowly and when it comes to c here i have carried out what is this one here in this case I, this is uh, cooling at constant pressure this expansion at constant pressure this is compression at constant pressure so all those things line which are horizontal indicate constant pressure process delta p is equal to 0 hence delta p is constant work done i can directly write pv is constant pv2 minus v1 is work done in case of constant pressure process and this pv2 is equal to nrt2 so basically sorry this term has to be r so nrt2 minus t1 that becomes work done so if i from here to here what is the work done if i have to calculate what is the work done here delta t is equal to plus delta t so work done will be equal to nr delta t plus here and from here since the compression okay so both cases work done are equal by the gas here work done is positive here work done is negative a to b here if the work done is plus w and a to c work done is minus w and that will be equal to nr into delta t that's work done now again we go back to first law of thermodynamics so again delta q heat given to gas is equal to work done by gas on the surrounding plus change in internal energy so here in this case what is happening here unlike uh, previous case here so previous case just just imagine here previous case uh, in case of iso uh, in case of constant pressure process how do we carry out constant pressure process from a constant pressure we uh, carry out this change like this so a to d is constant pressure process and a to b is constant sorry a to d is constant volume process and this one is constant pressure process both cases change in temperature is same it has moved from isotherm t to t plus delta t but just look at this which case will require more heat energy 
first case when we heated at constant volume from here to here okay so heat energy has gone entirely into changing internal energy here when we carry a process of a to b heat energy is doing two things it is partly going into change of internal energy it needs additional energy to carry out work hence the heat required in process a to b so q a to b will be greater than q a to d despite the delta t being same and why is this greater this is greater to the extent the work is done from a to b and what is the work done from a to b area done so if i write this additional amount of energy needed here so if i write what is the difference in heat given a to b minus heat given to carry your process from a to d that would be equal to area under so let's understand here let's understand heat given to gas goes partly into work done and rest is increasing this internal energy that's why this heat is more and uh, if it is more this term is more same delta t if this term is more basically after cp has to be more than cb and if i substitute this value so why i put cp here now this is a molar heat capacity for a specific process what is the mathematical relationship of the process p is equal to constant addition requirement and this is how we carry out constant pressure process we don't change the pressure we don't change the weight kept on the piston and only thing i have done here i have substituted in place of work done and our delta t if i substitute here if i divide this equation by n delta t i get the relationship cp is equal to r plus cb and this is true for all type of gases monoatomic diatomic and polyatomic heat capacity at constant pressure process it is higher and you notice there is a particular relationship particular proportion it is again independent of temperature that is constant pressure process okay now we move on to something of adiabatic process as the name suggests heat is not given it means uh, the entire piston is put into an insulated method there is insulation all around so either heat is not taken away nor given here again if i apply first law here since delta q is equal to 0 work done will equal to minus delta u and minus delta u is equal to ncv delta t we have done it because we already said right? so this one so work done will be equal to minus ncv delta t so if we know change in temperature and if the process adiabatic we will know what the work the gas will perform and uh, i will not go to derivation using this condition we arrive so if this kind of process carried out how would pressure and volume vary how would parameters vary okay, every process will have a mathematical equation and here the mathematical equation is pv raised to power gamma is equal to constant adiabatic constant and gamma is equal to cp by cb and if pv is equal to constant we can always use the relationship pv is equal to nrt so in place of if i want so see everywhere we'll have three relationship this relation will be pv there can be relation between t and v and there also between p and t also we can so if i want relationship between t and v i in place of p i'll substitute p is proportional to t by v so in place of p if i substitute t by v it becomes t into v raised to power gamma minus 1 so if we understand this one other relation can easily be arrived at so this is the relationship how pressure so if we carry out adiabatic process adiabatic process this is a kind of relationship it will follow so let me understand let me just briefly explain adiabatic process in case of adiabatic process again what will be the slope of adiabatic process i would again if i follow same mathematical relationship how do we do in place of for small changes the small changes delta by p when we talk about slope the changes have to be small very very small and up here this one will be gamma times delta v because the power of v is gamma this is the relationship and from here we can find out slope which is delta p by delta v and delta tending to zero the slope comes equal to minus gamma times pv of course the slope is negative but gamma is always greater than 1 and some of you remember gamma gamma is equal to cp by cv for uh, monoatomic diatomic if i have monoatomic diatomic and polyatomic first i write a cv term basically cv term will be equal to this will be three term this will be five and this will be six and a numerator will be higher by two this will be 
5 higher by 2 7 and this will be 8. So this is gamma here. Okay. So this is 3, 5, 6 and plus 2 plus 2 we add. We can write this equation. So this gamma is always, this is for monatomic gas 1.67, for diatomic gas 1.4 and this is equal to 1.33. So what we write, gamma progressive decreases for higher atomicity of gas here. It is steeper than isotherm curve at the same point. So let's understand what this means here. So suppose I am there at a particular value, a particular place on indicator diagram, and this point A, this is pressure is P and volume is V. So if I carry out isothermal process, isothermal process case is how do we carry out isothermal process? Isothermal process, we carry out isothermal process. So if I have a cylinder with a piston arrangement, if I either expose it to the surrounding, that's isothermal process. So any process which is exposed to air or surrounding, and if it is carried out slowly, if it is carried out slowly, the temperature of gas will always be equal to surrounding temperature. It becomes an isothermal process. So any process which is carried out in a manner where heat transfer can take place and is exposed to constant environment is isothermal process. Another way you can think of isothermal process, if I keep this entire system in a liquid bath, which is maintained at a constant temperature, it's an isothermal process. So what? how do I carry out isothermal expansion? So if I have either exposed to atmosphere or to a liquid bath at a constant temperature T here, if I remove some weight from here, so earlier I have kept some weight here in previous sand grains. If I remove one by one grain at a time, what will happen? Pressure will reduce. Every time I remove again, pressure will reduce. And as the pressure reduces here, the gas will expand. So if I keep marking all the point, I'll get an isotherm curve. And what you notice here, this is isotherm curve. How would I carry out adiabatic process? Adiabatic process uh, is here I have kept a water bath. If I have to carry out adiabatic process here, adiabatic process is just imagine there's a, a, a cylinder with a piston. That's my our ideal system of th thinking thermodynamic system. It contains some gas inside. I cover with the insulating material from all sides. How would I carry out adiabatic process here? Slowly, I remove this weight from here. If I remove sand grains slowly, that means I'm reducing the pressure very, very slowly. So when I remove the pressure, what will happen? It will expand. And as it expands, what I find for same change in pressure, change in volume will not be equal. Here it is, heat transfer is taking place, heat transfer is not taking place. If I plot all those points here, it will go like this. So what I find, adiabatic process, if there are two curves, blue curve is isothermal process and uh, green line is adiabatic process, what I find at the same point, adiabatic process will be always steeper. Adiabatic process will be steeper, both will have negative slope, but adiabatic process is steeper. That's what we have to understand. And when adiabatic expansion, so here this part, if I carry a process like this, I will keep slowly reducing pressure on the piston here. It will follow and this is curve is steeper if we go below isothermal. And we know whenever process goes below isotherm, temperature will fall. So if I look this part of the curve, two things, uh, two, uh, three things I'll say. This process is adiabatic. It is expansion because volume is increasing and its temperature is falling. It has gone below isotherm curve. So adiabatic expansion, temperature falls. How do I carry out adiabatic compression starting from A? So if I go like this, it's adiabatic expansion. How would you carry out adiabatic compression? Let's understand. If I add more sand here, if I add more sand here, I'm increasing the weight on the piston. Slowly, if I add, pressure will keep rising. So add slowly, add some more weight and check what the volume is. Add, keep adding it, volume will keep decreasing here. You know, volume will go in this side. So this becomes my adiabatic co compression. So you understand this is a previous one, adiabatic expansion. This is adiabatic compression. And in case of adiabatic compression, these points are above isotherm curve. If they are above isotherm curve, it means compared to initial temperature, the temperature has risen. 
So adiabatic compression, temperature rises. Adiabatic expansion, temperature falls. And this comes out of this expression that adiabatic curve is steeper compared to isothermal curve. And this is one of the, uh, this also important point. Yeah, all are in minor points and important points to be understood. Okay, so this is something. So again, if I just focus on, so out of this, if somebody says, which one is from this point? Both are expansion curve. If it is mentioned, one of them is isothermal, other is adiabatic. I will say one is isothermal because it is flatter. And this one is adiabatic. Both are expansion. One is adiabatic and other one is isothermal. Similarly, and both are expansion. If I have another curve like this, this is the starting point and how is the volume changing? Final volume is smaller. If final volume is lesser than initial volume, it is compression. And if one of them is not very neatly drawn, so if one of them is adiabatic and one is uh, isothermal, the one which has lesser slope, less steep slope is isothermal. And the one which is more steep is adiabatic. We can spot those curves based on if two are there, we can spot and this in this case, uh, temperature is rising. So this is what we need to understand here. So another thing what we understand here, any process we carry out. So this is something we talked about two process, isothermal and adiabatic. And as you understand, if I draw any line on indicator diagram, any line or indicator diagram, if I draw, that becomes a process. What happens if I carry out a process which is shown like this? If the process is, this will be expansion process. And if this expansion is carried out, I find this process is above isotherm curve is above adiabatic curve. Anything above isotherm curve, delta T is positive. Anything above adiabatic curve, delta Q is positive. So when is delta Q sign? Delta Q sign, if we go above adiabatic curve, delta Q is positive. Below adiabatic curve, delta Q is negative. So if we carry out another process, and we'll come to a little more, we understand how do we carry out the process. And suppose we carry out a process which is something like this. Let me put some other color. Okay, so let's say to white color. If we carry out process which is like this, even more steep than adiabatic. If we carry out a process like this, and you know, uh, this process is PV raised to power N, P raised, PV raised to power one, thus isothermal process. PV raised to power gamma, which is greater than one is adiabatic process. So if we have any process where power of V is something like A, if A is greater than gamma, no, it will become even more steep. So what is this process here? A value has to be greater than gamma. This is process like this. If I carry this process, and this is expansion process, where uh, the exponent of V is greater than gamma. In this case, this goes below isotherm. Below isotherm is temperature will fall, and is below adiabatic curve also. So this process delta T will be negative, and since this process below, below adiabatic curve, even delta Q also will be negative. We'll come to a little more, little later also, but this is what we need to keep in mind. Simple point, what you need to find. If we go above adiabatic curve, delta Q is positive, similar to isotherm and adiabatic. So let's understand in case of less type. Let's take one example where I will try to again explain this point here. So let's say there are different gases which are at same pressure, volume, and temperature. So let's say this gas, and if it is a particular pressure, it has particular volume and particular temperature. So I can mark its position on any of the three indicator diagram. I'm choosing to use PV diagram, which is more common. So it has pressure P and it has volume V. So this is my starting position. And from here, we can, you know, by changing parameter, by adding pressure, heat, and all, we can carry out different types of process. I hope we got some sense of what does process mean. So let's from here, we draw the PV diagram showing expansion. So we carry out expansion. It means we always, expansion means what? We always move towards right of the starting point. If we move in this direction, it is expansion. And if we move towards left-hand side of the curve, this is compression, right? The volume decreases. So this is the initial point. Now, if I carry out isobaric expansion, 
isobaric expansion of can i easily plot how would isobaric expansion will mean here isobaric will p has to remain same so if i have to draw that shape this is isobaric expansion curve if i draw a curve like this this is isobaric expansion and we can easily understand why so second if i have same gas if i have to draw isothermal expansion isothermal i will draw a curve which will have surface slope of minus pv if i draw let's say the isothermal expansion curve comes something like this so this is the shape of let's say so i draw a curve so that product of pv remains constant that becomes isothermal this is isothermal expansion curve now once we have isobaric and isothermal expansion now i have adiabatic expansion for three different types of gases i have monatomic gas I have adiabatic expansion for something like helium. I have adiabatic expansion for oxygen. I have adiabatic expansion for something like maybe ammonia, or maybe something like carbon dioxide itself. So all three gases, if I carry out adiabatic expansion, how would the shape of curve look like? Will they have identical shape or not? They will not. Why they will not have identical shape? Because if I take the slope at this point, slope of adiabatic process is minus gamma times p by v so starting point for all process same so p by v is same but it will differ by gamma gamma for helium is 1.67 for diatomic gas it is equal to 1.4 and this is equal to 1.33 so it means for among all three gases monoatomic will be steepest and polyatomic will be flattest but still even the polyatomic also will be steeper compared to isothermal curve so let's see that one see that one how it would look like so let me first draw the curve for polyatomic gas so this will be steeper by a factor of 1.33 compared to isothermal curve so if i draw a uh, something like the adiabatic expansion this is adiabatic expansion for polyatomic gas co2 is steeper than isothermal if i draw for next gas which is diatomic gas how would diatomic gas look like diatomic gas steep it will be even more steep so diatomic gas will look something like this this is for polyatomic this is for diatomic and similarly if i draw for monatomic gas will be steepest of all three and monatomic gas may 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 look something like this that's monatomic gas so if four curves are given suppose nothing was mentioned what is given this four different colors are given and is mentioned one of them is isothermal and three are adiabatic expansion for three different gases can you identify for which is for which gas if gases are given yes we can identify the flattest one is isothermal among the three which are steeper of the three most steep one is for monatomic diatomic polyatomic and even this simple graph questions also have come in the examination asking you to identify the gas here that's all hmm? so this is the important point we need to understand here okay so uh, i will take a small break here so we'll take a break and i hope all of this part be all so far all well understood and, uh, and this is what